Hello everybody and welcome back to the free online woodworking school where we aim to take your woodworking skills to the next level. In today's video, we're going to get the drawer fitted. Let's get going. Fitting a traditional drawer. This is one of the hallmarks of fine furniture making. So it's quite important we get this right. Now, if you'll remember in the last episodes, we made the tails of the drawer sit slightly prouder than the pins. And so the first job we need to do is flush that off and get this side flush with the end grain on the front and the end grain on the back. Once we've done that, we can start shaving off material from that entire side and get it a lovely smooth fit. And so for this, if you're able to clamp the entire drawer nice and low in the vise like this, and you've got support across the entire length of it, then go for that. That'll be a really good way of doing it. And I've got that advantage with the nice wide jaw chop I've got here. If however, you're working with a quick release vise, for example, which is what most of you probably will be, you'll have bars underneath here, which will prevent you from getting the drawer in the entire way. Thus, you'll need to clamp it up here. I wouldn't advise doing this because this doesn't make the drawer very stable and that skewing action may start introducing gaps and loosening those joints. And so you wanna make sure it is supported right around the area that you're cutting. And so if you find yourself in that position, the best bit of advice I have for you is to remove the bottom of the drawer by removing that screw and pull it out. And then you simply get a piece of material, clamp to your bench, slightly overhanging it, and then you hook the drawer on like that. You could do it like this with the base fitted, but it's a little more stable if you've got this piece of material sticking out a little bit further, but it's up to you. This is a really good way of doing it though. Just make sure that this material is nice and thick and strong because you don't want it bending over the edge of the bench while you're trying to plane it. And so I'm gonna use a combination of both of these methods. The drawer's going in the vise, and then I'm gonna slide a supporting block from behind just to give that face support across the entire length of it. And then we'll get this clamped down as well. Now the size of plane you use to flush off this joint is completely up to you. You've got a choice of a block plane, a smoothing plane, or a jack plane. For a drawer this small, I would recommend going for something like a smoothing plane because the overall length of this and the width is perfect for flattening those short sides and slightly longer back. However, in this video, you're going to see me using a jack plane. The reason for this is I have a 50 degree blade in this jack plane at the moment because I'm gonna be dealing with some pretty wacky grain on the side of this drawer and I don't wanna cause any tear out. And by increasing the cutting angle of that plane, it will act more like a scraper plane and give me less tear out. Whereas it's slightly more difficult to achieve that on my number four plane because I'd need to put a back bevel on it and it would basically involve writing off a blade, which I don't really want to do. And so this with a dedicated 50 degree blade is gonna be my go-to option. The only problem is it's gonna be slightly cumbersome for this task. And if you wanna know more about increasing blade angles to reduce tear out, then I've done an entire lesson on it on my free online woodworking school. And there'll be a link to that in the supporting resources below. It will help you deal with wacky grain such as curly timbers, reversing grain and all sorts of other things that you will eventually face as a furniture maker and so when you do face it you will know exactly how to tackle it without all the headaches it will invariably cause. And so this blade is incredibly sharp and bear in mind at the moment I have the luxury of being able to go straight off the end at the moment because I'm not quite cutting that end grain but you've got to be super super careful with this because as soon as that blade catches the end grain it may want to break out. And so I'm making the most of it now while these tails are sitting proud, but as soon as I feel it snag it, that's where I'm gonna stop doing through shavings and I'm gonna begin working from the outsides to the middle and this outside to the middle as well. Right, so the joints are all flush with the end grain on either side, which means that, there we go. So it's just snagging. And the reason I knew that would be a good fit is because we originally sized the back of the drawer to be a tight fit in there. And now we've planed down the sides to be flush with it. The end grain of that hasn't changed whatsoever. We've just brought the sides down to the exact same length of it. And now we can just focus purely on removing the material we need to, to get that to go all the way in. But before going any further with the sides, it's always worth checking the top as well to ensure it's not pinching top to bottom. And so next I'm gonna work on flushing off this top edge and also the bottom edge of the drawer as well. And so with both the bottom and the top of the drawer, for now, just focus on getting all the joints flush. Don't worry about hogging off material to make it fit. Just get everything flush on both sides. And then from that point, we'll start removing material to make it fit. All right, that is looking much better. And so you might be able to see 
we've got a very small gap at the top of the drawer. This is actually a good thing because with all four sides of this drawer, as the humidity changes throughout the year, it's gonna to want to expand and contract upwards. And so if the fit is incredibly tight from top to bottom, this will undoubtedly expand and then lock itself in the cabinet. In which case to remove it, you'll need to take the back panel off and punch it out from behind. And so we'll dial in that gap towards the end of this video. But for now, now that I can see I've got clearance top to bottom, we will refocus our attention on the sides of the drawer and make sure that it's able to go in the entire way. And so with this stage, it is quite difficult to see where you actually need to remove material from. And so what I tend to do, is push the drawer in as far as it'll go, give it a little wiggle, and then if possible, try and move it in back and forth as well. And then basically have a look at the sides and see where the shiny spots are and where it's rubbing. And so looking at these back tails, looks pretty similar until you lower your vision and you can see that it's actually a little bit glossier than the rest of the material, meaning that that is the area it's rubbing. And so after about three to five shavings on either side, let's see where that's left us. A little bit further, a little bit further. So let's get that in as far as we can go. Give it a wiggle, pull it back out again. Oh, blimey. So I can definitely spot a little bit of glossiness there. And there's definitely a little bit between these tails as well, where it's quite difficult to see on camera. Alrighty, so we have got the drawer fitted. Goes in lovely, I'm not gonna push it in all the way like I just have in case it gets stuck. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. It's slightly more wobbly at the back than I would have liked, but I had a little bit of tear out here and on this side as well that just wasn't behaving as planned and I ended up taking off a little bit too much material, which is a bit of a shame, but the front is pretty good. Very minimal movement there whatsoever. Now throughout the year, because the grain is going this way, it means that the drawer is going to get taller and shorter as the humidity changes. And so we need to account for a little bit of expansion above the drawer. And I've actually already done that. It's about a millimeter, about half a millimeter, a millimeter, something like that. But yeah, just a little bit of space above to allow that drawer to expand and contract without getting locked in the carcass. Now at this point, I'm gonna push it all the way in. It looks a little bit weird with a big shadow gap there and then smaller ones all the way around the other sides. And so we're gonna get it even around these remaining three sides and make it look consistent just like we did with the door. And regarding the actual fit of the drawer at this stage, there are small areas where I can feel a little bit of scraping going on, but it's running smoothly at the moment. I'll sort those areas out when it comes to sanding. So I don't want to get it completely frictionless at this point, because by the time it comes to sanding, I'll end up making it way too loose. So having a little bit of resistance here isn't much of a bad thing. As long as you've taken off the majority of it, the faces are nice and flat and the drawer is running smoothly. And so to get this shadow gap even around the drawer, instead of taking off material from this face and potentially making the drawer wobbly, we're going to do it with a very small chamfer. So for this, I find the best way to do it without breaking out end grain on the back here is place the plane on at 45 degrees and skew it up off towards the end grain. Don't skew it down like that because you'll be cutting against the grain if you do that. So across the edge, get it nice and flat on there and then just twist it round so that it's facing up. And 
we'll just do a little one on the top just to take that edge off. Okay, so now the sides are fitted, let's get the back flush. Nothing too special here, basically just get it flush. Obviously look out for the areas here where the end grain is unsupported and up at the top here as well. But yeah, other than that, just go for it. So the only thing we haven't done at this point is obviously clean up the front of the drawer. We're not going to do that until we get the drawer stops fitted, which is what we'll be doing in the next video. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please not forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video where we get these drawer stops fitted. Mm.